Hey everybody, it's Marin, and today I wanna do another minimalist Q&A. You guys have such great questions sometimes and I feel bad that I can't get to them all, but I combed out several of the ones that I feel like you might appreciate some answers to. So the first question that I have is by Kelsey and Emmett, and they were wondering what I wore to the courthouse when I got married. If you guys haven't seen the video, I'll stick it up right now. I did not have a wedding. I did not have an engagement ring, still don't. And what I wore to the courthouse, I really can't remember. We didn't get dressed. I didn't even know that we were going to have a mini ceremony in the courthouse. I thought we were literally going in to sign some papers. So we went in whatever it was that we were wearing that day. Next question is from Esther Sarah. Do you celebrate birthdays? It makes me sad your kids don't get to celebrate holidays. This minimal thing seems more like a mental breakdown. I understand some of it, but no holidays, sleeping on the floor, etc. You don't need a huge wedding. Small weddings are okay. Aw, Esther, don't be sad. My content's not meant to make anybody sad, so I'm really sorry that you feel that way. Um, we do sort of celebrate holidays and birthdays. I've addressed this in some of my other videos. We don't make a big thing of it, but of course it happens and our family puts on things. They send gifts, invite us to events, make phone calls, FaceTime. We travel to Washington for Christmas, so my kids had a Christmas this year with a Christmas tree, wrapped presents, and all. And we also allow the kids to choose. So there was this year this last year in 2016 both girls wanted a little bit of a cake and they wanted to spend time with just mom and dad so we went to the movies we got them a cake came home and spent really good quality time together minimalism is not about having a mental breakdown although I think it really would relieve a lot of people who may be having mental breakdowns because the world is so overwhelmed with so much stuff distractions consumerisms thoughts ideas media television shows movies entertainment I mean you name it drama stress we are inundated and compounded with so much that sometimes we don't have a moment or take a moment to literally simplify and just breathe. Just breathe for a moment. We think about too many things and this is a huge reason why we promote minimalism here. And minimalism doesn't have to be no floor sleeping, yes floor sleeping, no wedding, big wedding, uh, no holidays, yes holidays. It literally is what adds value to your life. Why do you do it? So for us, in our choices, we make them because they add value to our life. For us, when we don't focus on holidays, we really notice that our kids become less materialistic. They want things like quality time rather than this toy, that toy, that party, this dress. Those things can be the main focus when it comes to birthdays and then result in kids who are less satisfied with life. And as far as sleeping on the floor, this is something that if you just scroll through the comments, is something that many people continue to practice today throughout the world. Just because us Western countries are used to sleeping on a bed, I understand that it's a little bit different can be weird we've been told in certain circumstances that certain things are unhealthy but if you do a lot of research there's been a lot of health benefits through it and for myself I've been able to heal a lot of car injury that I've had to suffer through several years of sleeping on a bed and so we choose to sleep on the floor my kids have also had the choice to sleep on a bed which my oldest child had taken on for about six months before she decided to come back and sleep on the floor. So I feel like that wraps up a lot of answers in that one question, especially for those of you who may be thinking about this, how to approach it for holidays or floor sleeping or your family and children. Question number three is like the most common question I get over and over and over again. And for those of you guys that are part of this channel and regular subscribers, you will know that the bed in this room is not my bed. One thing that you guys might not know is that most of the houses here in Hawaii, whether you're renting or owning, come with furniture. And so if you're looking for this as an investment purpose or you're leasing like we are, you're kind of stuck with what's already in the house. Now we've done a lot of moving pieces of furniture into the garage and stuff that we're not using, but 
This bed is here because we have lots of guests that come over and it's just easier to keep it up than to move it all the time. If I had my own home that I was gonna make exactly for myself, no other purpose except for this is where I wanna be and where I'm settling down, we most likely would have a really fancy blow up bed or a futon or pull out sofa for our guest bed. So unfortunately, I've thought about moving it, but it's just, it's too much and I don't wanna change too much around and mess up what the owners of the home may not like me to mess up with so it's there and now you guys know not my bed we do sleep on the floor but this bed is here and it is a uh absolute mess right now next question came from my minimalist packing video what product is it i'm using for my teeth i actually have invisalign and they have a product called excelident which helps speed up the process a lot of you might be asking why i have invisalign because my teeth are straight well i did have braces and they have moved and are starting to cause like tmj and breathing problems so i had to go back into invisalign to help correct or shift the whole jawline so even though the teeth aren't crooked the jawline had moved and it's causing problems Somebody asked why we moved to a condo when the farm property sounded really cool and it, some of you guys might have seen that it seemed really cool. And the biggest reason was life efficiency. It was so far away from anything, like 45 to an hour and a half in either direction just to get to an actual town. And we also lived off road, so it beat up our car. We lived on a solar system that was only half working depending on the weather. The internet was really tough to get and we worked this full blown business for the last couple years which made it really really difficult and the minute that we moved to this condo life was so efficient everything's right here the weather's always great I'm not interrupted by rain all the time which is huge for a lot of my work is sound sensitive all of the kids activities are close by so the kids have been able to participate in dance gymnastics martial arts school play times lots of playgrounds kids and socialization was is really huge for homeschool kids ultimately we had to make that choice and life did become more efficient and it seems to have been really beneficial for us as a whole angelica is wondering what our elf on the shelf holiday beliefs are and even though the holidays are over this was a question on our minimalist holiday video and our approach is simply just telling the kids what the story is we like to approach because in our own personalities our own relationships we have like a 100 percent trust and communication type of approach and i'm not saying that this is not you if you tell your kids that santa's real or you want to you know approach the holidays that way but for us i never grew up believing in santa i'm pretty sure my husband didn't grow up believing in santa and so we just wanted to be really upfront from the get-go that this is what some kids believe in, mom and dad don't believe in it. This is, you know, a story. It's your choice whether or not you want to believe in it. And so they just kind of take that simple approach and learn to respect the fact that other kids may believe in Santa Claus or Elf on the Shelf. It's something that we've definitely talked about and made a distinct decision on. But we really try to just teach our kids early on to be respectful of other people's opinions and to understand that everybody has different beliefs and what might be true to them or what they might feel on their heart can vary for other people and that it's really important to be open and respectful to that. Somebody's asking what brand of neck pillow I use for my travel because I love using neck pillows on the plane. And I really don't know. It's just something I bought from the airport, but I will try to find it for you and put it somewhere on the screen for you here. Last question is, would I ever cut my hair short again? This is a really, it's an interesting topic for me because on just all practicality, I love the way that short hair feels because it's not shedding all the time. I use less product if I'm ever conditioning or shampooing my hair or anything like that. You use so much more product with long hair, but at the same time having short hair, I can't put it up. And so I'm torn between that. Not only can I not put it up, but my hair is so thick and heavy that in order for it to look good short, it has to be cut continuously. Whereas like my hair, I haven't touched this since the middle of last year. So it's like easier in a sense being long, but at the same time it sheds a lot and it can be tangled and I don't know. I really don't know. Right now I'm really digging the long hair, so never say never, right? All right, guys, that is it for minimalist questions. I just wanted to get these questions to you guys. If you guys have more, stick them down in the comments below. Let me know you like this video by hitting thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. If you are new, welcome to the family. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you guys in the next video.